What's up guys? Welcome back to World Renowned Turbo Tractor and today we are going to be unboxing and taking a look at these driving cars which have been released recently by Mattel. They were released back in 2020 and only available at a few exclusive places including HEB stores in Texas. However, recently they have been showing up in Targets in other areas of the U.S. So I was gladly able to pick these up as I didn't really have any other way to pick them up unless I ordered them online. They retail for $4 each, so I hope that you guys can find them in your targets if you want them, so keep an eye out for them. Obviously, the driving cars have not been released in recent years. They were primarily released around 2010-ish, though they had a few releases after the Cars 2 era, not many. So I think it's a very nice surprise that Mattel gave us to release all of these, and I think it's cool that they're released in a series because... I mean, they are kind of separate. They did not appear in Cars, but rather they appeared in a movie that was in Cars. I don't know if you see what I did there, but anyway, I think that's very cool. However, the only thing that they are lacking is they have not released the Yeti or the Abominable Snowplow in any way. They have only released seven of eight, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know... At least we see most of them here. But I think that at this point, it's unlikely that Mattel would end up releasing the Abominable Snowplow. Now, these are rather small cars, and they're all very unique. So, there are not many diecasts quite like them, as they represent characters from other Pixar movies. So, that's very, very neat. There are a lot of my favorite characters that have been released in the Cars line, even though they appeared in Cars very briefly. Taking a look at the packaging here, we can see that they show a prototype sort of image of the die cast rather than a digital art from the movie which still is effective i think i also really like the retro drive-in movie theater uh design we have here it says drive-in right there with the kind of retro neon lights as well as a desert background which is appropriate in tying the die cast in with the main line and if you look closely you can see the tops of lizzie Luigi and Guido's heads they're watching so that's neat that they included that also I love the um, design here that we have for the name tag as it reminds me of the 2015-2016 era of cars on the back you can see all the other ones that you can get here as well as that drive-in logo once again and Disney Pixar cars and they have a kind of navy color which looks very neat in my opinion all of them are pretty much the same. You can see Mike is that way as well. And you can see their expressions are the same as the die cast because, again, it's a prototype image for the die cast. So let's start taking a look at these guys. Let's start here. I have all of them lined out. Here are the ones from Monsters, Inc. Here are the ones from Bugs Life and Toy Story in the back row there. Let's just start from the front and take a look at Sully. Again, I used him as an example to show the packaging, but I'll just show him very briefly here again. Very, very cool. He has a rather strong blister. For being a big monster truck, he's actually a pretty small die cast, but I kind of think it fits the scope of having these characters released as other Pixar characters that are ne not necessarily part of the actual Cars world. You can see he is a very good representation of Sully from Monsters, Inc. He has a very warm smile right there, blue eyes, obviously the Vietnam kind of eye shadowing, whatever you want to call that, going on there, as well as a nose, a little green nose there, and horns, which are very rare in the Cars universe for obvious reasons. And he is blue, and he's got these little purple polka dots going on over here, just like his fur. It looks like he's supposed to be some sort of big SUV, which would fit a big monster like him. And he's got these extremely exaggerated giant tires right here with purple rims. Those look very cool. I love how exaggerated his uh, die cast is here. Up next, here is Mike Wazowski. Sully's best buddy. Again, you can see him right there. The one-eyed little monster. Same packaging design as well as the rest you can buy from the series aside from him. So let's pop him out of the package. These ones definitely have a very strong uh, packaging, so they are kind of hard to unbox, but I guess that is a good thing as it helps to protect the die cast. 
And here he is. He is much smaller even than Sully, which kind of makes sense. So he's got his one eye right there, which of course is accurate. It's blue, and you can see his teeth in there and his big uh, toothy grin right there, as well as some yellow horns attached to the side. And he has three wheels, sort of like a forklift like Guido would, but that kind of represents how small he is. He's basically a round little car. That looks to be some sort of exhaust pipe right there in the back. And he's got little itty bitty green beads for his rims right there. So he looks very neat. Moving right along to A Bug's Life, one of my personal favorite Pixar movies. Here we have Flick. The protagonist, represented as, you know, a Volkswagen Beetle type thing, which kind of signifies that he's a bug. You can see the same packaging design. So as the rest you can get on the back there. Very, very small die cast. And here is our friend Flick the Ant. And again, he looks like a Volkswagen Beetle type bug. He has the kind of blue paint going on. Perfectly it represents his color in the movie. Blue eyes. He has a kind of neutral expression, if you can call it that. And he looks happy, cheerful. And he's got these little rubber antennas. You kind of have to be careful not to break those but they come kind of bent i think that's on purpose in these certain positions kind of they're not exactly symmetrical but i guess that would be accurate so i really like that that definitely makes him look more like a bug he's really just got these kind of basic rims that a car would have with silver right there on those tires and he has some silver painted headlights he's really pretty basic looking you can see some of the sculpting going on on his hood but he does look very good and on the back you can see his headlights his bumper his trunk all of those details and up next we have pt flea who is more of an antagonist than a protagonist as the uh, greedy um circus owner ringmaster whatever you want to call him you can see him right there same packaging design here's the rest that you can get I sort of think that he might be one of my favorites because his expression is really good, especially with the kind of jagged mouth design that represents his type of insect in the show. He was actually a very small insect as he's supposed to be a flea. You can see he has this dirty old hat on his head, kind of pushed to the front of his head. Doesn't really fit him very well but he sort of looks like a P.T. Cruiser, and that kind of makes sense, since his name is, after all, P.T. Flea. His eyes are kind of yellowed looking, which I feel is accurate, and he's kind of got a deceitful, maybe a greedy, selfish expression going on right there. You can see he's got brown eyes, his mouth is jagged right here. Those aren't teeth, those are just kind of, that would be like his lip covering his bottom lip right there. And he's got this kind of, uh, kind of, yellowy green color kind of a gross color going on around him looks like his license plate says zsd see his tail lights there as well as some of his other details he's a pretty good representation up next guys we have toy story so let's start with ham who has always been kind of an oddball as one of the driving characters as unlike the other characters he has been released mostly as a single rather than a two-pack but anyway we can see him right there on the front the other ones you can get on the back the actor for him played mac in cars and you can hear mac commenting about that in cars which is a funny little reference they had there obviously he represents a toy piggy bank which was translated quite well into this die cast so he's got a kind of pinkish uh, paint job going on there representing like you know what a pig would look like 
and he, he doesn't have the kind of standard eyes that the Pixar cars have because this represents the sort of beady eyes that he had on his toy in Toy Story. And he has the pig snout right there, a, a smiling expression. And he's got the little piggy ears on the top there. Looks very, very neat. You can see everything is covered um, in the tan color because he is, of course, a pig. So it wouldn't make sense if he had real windows. And on the back here, you can even see a tiny little swirl, which represents a piggy tail. So I love that. Also, you can see the hole here, which you might actually be able to fit something inside of if you put it in there that, of course, a piggy bank would have. And then you can see his wheels here with the same kind of skin tone for the wheels or the rims, excuse me. And they are kind of slanted out a bit because of his weight, which pushes them out, just like his legs sort of work as these represent his legs. So I love how that translates. You would assume that he is full of a lot of change and therefore would be very heavy and put a lot of stress on these wheels. Up next, here we have Buzz Lightyear, the arrogant space ranger. Whoops, almost killed Sully there. Don't want to do that. You can see him right there as well as all the other ones you can get on the back. And he probably, I would go so far to say that his uh, vehicle design is the most unique out of all of these since he represents a futuristic vehicle since he is a spaceman. And I think that translates very well with this. He sort of looks like a UFO. Of course, he does have wheels, a bit of a race car maybe, so. This is apparently what a spaceman toy would look like in the Cars world, and I definitely love how it turned out because I think it's fantastic. You can see he has a pretty proud expression there. He's got the blue eyes. His head is covered in this helmet. The helmet is not removable, unlike the actual toy. But you can see his mask painted purple in there. That is a very cool feature, and it's, it's transparent all the way around. And you can see on the front here, <clears throat> his uh, face right there. Here is the button. Now, let's see if I remember this. This is the little button that ejects his wings. And his wings are represented by this little spoiler on the back, which is appropriate. And then these buttons make him say something. I think one of them, I think the red one makes him shoot a laser, but I don't remember for sure. Now he's got these very wide exaggerated tires on the bottom that are purple. So very futuristic and they have these little green rims. Oh no, 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 that's, that's, it's the button on his arm that shoots the laser, which is represented right there. So supposedly if you press that, that will make him shoot a laser. Very cool. And then you can see the Space Ranger logo on the side there, very iconic to Buzz Lightyear. And I absolutely love all the detailing on him, especially this awesome spoiler that represents his wings. And last but not least, here is Woody, the star of Toy Story, the toy cowboy. See him right there, as well as the other ones, of course, you can get on the back. Now, let's check him out. We can pop him out here. He represents a little station wagon which I think is appropriate for a character who's a cowboy in the Cars world. Almost got him. So yeah, he's a little station wagon car here. So you can see he's got the plastic cowboy hat kind of pushed to the front of his head or car body, whatever you would refer to that as. He's got a happy expression as well. He's got a little grin right there, as well as brown eyes, and you can see the plaid paint going on, which represents his cowboy uniform as well as the cow hide right there. I love how that translated onto the die cast. And you can also see the uh, kind of wood siding that cars of this era, like the station wagon would have had, which again, I think is appropriate, especially the colors for Woody you as a cowboy, having this yellow and brown going on here. And I definitely think he translates uh, as Woody very well. Now he's got these little silver rims with stars on them, which makes sense. Those stars look kind of like a sheriff's badge. They don't really look like cowboy boots like I would expect them to, but I do think that looks very good. 
Notice he doesn't have any headlights, which I think makes sense because there's really no place for headlights on him, nor are there tail lights. He's got a little bumper though. He definitely does look like a car. So there you have it guys, all of the Pixar drive-in cars. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to have to say that Mr. Space Ranger Buzz Lightyear here is going to be my favorite since he's so far out. But you guys tell me in the comments down below which one of these is your favorite and whether you plan on getting these or already have them. I hope you guys can find them if you want them. So keep your eyes open at Target and I'll see you guys next time. So take care.